Welcome back, everyone. If you are feeling overworked and underpaid, listen up. There's a new proposal from the Labor Department that would make more workers eligible for overtime. Are you on that list? Let's find out. Ed Herman's with the law firm Brown and Crew. But Ed, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. And I, I want to say right out of the gate, yeah. I don't want people to get too excited. Right. Because efforts have been made before to change this, and those efforts have failed. They've and been there's squashed. no guarantee that these efforts are going to work. And we're going to talk uh, about some of those past efforts we will. in a little bit, too. We but will. The, the foundation here is for a long time, nearly a century, American workers have been guaranteed a certain minimum wage, <laughs> right. uh, time and a half if you work more than 40 hours. With some exceptions. They did. They, these white collar exemptions right. were created and they haven't really been modified in years. Basically, you know, if you're a salaried employee, in other words, you're not working hourly, you're kind of, you know, I get this much a year. Um, and if it's over a certain threshold and if you have certain duties, mm -hmm. they could be executive duties, sometimes administrative duties, professional duties, even some computer duties, right. they can make you an exempt employee and then they don't have to pay you overtime. And the threshold for that, salary-wise, is just a little over $23,000. That hasn't been changed in years. If you're a family of four, that's technically below the poverty level. Mm -hmm. So that, that seems awfully low. It gets to the point where if you have a person that meets these criteria that's exempt, they could be working 50, 60 hours a week right. and technically mm -hmm. be making less than minimum wage. Mm -hmm. So there, there are always some efforts to look at this and figure out, well, how can we modify this to make it the way it was intended to be? Now, the context is important here, too, because you have to remember when these rules were initially put in place, there were a lot of industrial and manufacturing jobs in America, and these jobs where right. people were exempt were few and far between. The economy has kind has of changed. Yeah, we used to be very much a blue-collar economy, and yeah. now we're a white-collar economy. And I think in the mid-'70s, 62% of salaried employees were eligible for overtime. Mm -hmm. In today's economy, only 7% of salaried employees See, are eligible for overtime. That's a troubling trend line. It, 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 it really yeah. is. Yeah. And I know maybe, you know, there was a, a belief maybe that blue collar work because it was more physically demanding. The, you know, the labor laws were a little bit more interested in protecting them physically mm -hmm. and not necessarily economically. Whereas white collar, maybe they felt like, look, you're in an office. It's not going to be as demanding, but th that's still a lot of time that you're spending. You're away from your family, and, and it can be taxing on you depending on what you do. So they attempted to change this in 16, right. and they attempted to basically, I won't get into too many specifics except to say they tried to make it so that about 4 million more American workers would become eligible for overtime that weren't currently eligible. And they couldn't get any traction over it. You know, businesses, as you can expect, will pretty much do whatever they can to fight this stuff because it increases their costs just the same way they always fight increases to the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. They want to maintain and make, and make profits. This new proposal is not as aggressive as the original one. This one would make about a, a million more people eligible for overtime and it would increase that salary threshold from 23,000 and change to a little over 35,000 and change. So that's at least a, a big step. You have more people that are making it between there right. that all of a sudden would find themselves eligible for overtime. But should we expect more challenges in court to this, just like we had in 2016? I think there will be. I think, you know, the, once they propose it, there's a comments period, there'll be some challenges. At some point, though, this clearly has to evolve with the times. Yeah. It makes no sense that they haven't even adjusted the salary threshold yeah. since the 1970s. It's like I one mean, time since the 70s. It, it, yeah, it's, but you know what? Yeah. I won't make any predictions because I know how powerful big business can be mm -hmm. and, and, and how they can dictate terms. So. But at least we're having a conversation and we know yeah. how things go. If you get a little momentum and a groundswell of uh, local support, sometimes that can help change things. Ed, yeah. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. He's exempt, by the way. If yeah. you'd like to get in touch <laughs> with Brown and Crouppen, and probably will be even after the change. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I, my days of overtime are over. But <laughs> you'd like to get in touch with Brown and Crouppen, and you can call them anytime at 314. That's why I only work at tight 40. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll see you. Clock in, clock out. 314-222-2222, or visit their website at GetBC. Com. You're not even getting reimbursed for parking, pal. I got news for you. You're yeah, on your no. own. No <laughs> mileage, no nothing. Mm -mm. No, boy. <laughs>